Hi there and welcome to the History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue making this content from just £1 a month. Plus you'll get exclusive access to worksheets, revision materials and you'll get to vote on forthcoming episodes. The link is in the description. Hi there guys, last time I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger. Hitler had been arrested following the attempted Munich Putsch and I told you that the Putsch had longer term consequences for Hitler and the Nazi party. Hitler was put on trial for treason and found guilty, but the judge had been sympathetic to Hitler's beliefs and Hitler used the trial effectively as a method of getting his views out to a wider audience. He was sentenced to five years in prison, but served only nine months. While in prison, Hitler used the time to rethink his strategy for the Nazi party. The violent uprising had failed and now Hitler believed the party needed a new plan. Whilst in prison, Hitler dictated his ideas to Rudolf Hess, who wrote them out in the book Mein Kampf, which translates to My Struggle in English. In the book, Hitler clearly sets out his beliefs and aims for Germany. The book is extremely anti-Semitic. In it, he outlines his racist theories. He discusses a belief that the German race was superior to others, calling them the Aryan race. He expresses a belief that Jewish people are deliberately undermining the Aryan race by intermarriage and taking over German politics and industry. He also cemented his views that in order for Germany to be great, the Treaty of Versailles should be ignored and that Germany needed to expand to create Lebensraum, or living space, for the German people. To do this, they would need to invade countries Hitler believed to be German territory and take their land. He wanted to take the means of industry from big businesses and have the government run them. He wanted to get rid of democracy. He believed that democracy was weak and that Germany needed a single strong leader who would bleed for the benefit of Germans. Finally, he set out his ideas about the perfect German family. He believed that women and men had clear roles within society and that the new cultural ideas of the 20th century were bad and Germany should return to traditional values. Once out of prison, Hitler turned his mind to reorganising the party. The failure of the Munich Putsch had shown that a violent uprising would be unsuccessful and a different tactic was needed. Hitler believed he would have to be elected into the Weimar Republic in order to take it over. However, the short sentence that he and the other Nazis were given showed Hitler that there was support for his ideas. Added to this was the benefit of getting his message out during the trial, which meant that Hitler was now better known throughout Germany and the world. Hitler began with existing structures. The party office in Munich now became the hub of Hitler's reorganisation. He made sure that the party would have money available for its campaigns by appointing Franz Schwartz as a party treasurer and ensured the party organisation by employing Philipp Buller as party secretary. He began to model the party on a government, putting into place a treasury, a foreign affairs department and other departments including education. He also set up women's and youth memberships, encouraging expanded membership. He also began to set up a national party rather than the local party that had existed before the putsch. He organised the party into 30 five regions, each with their own leadership structure. Hitler continued to rely on his trusted leaders to run this, and this is where Joseph Goebbels, who would become the Minister for Propaganda, got his break with the Nazi party. He got wealthy industrialists on side to pay for all the changes, although Hitler had said in Mein Kampf that he would take the means of production from big business, Hitler made promises to protect them and control the trade unions. Finally, he reorganised and strengthened the paramilitary arms of the party. By 1930, it expanded the SA to 400,000 men, which is four times the number allowed to the German army under the Treaty of Versailles. However, Hitler didn't trust the SA. They had become loyal to Ernst Röhm while Hitler was in prison, so he sent Röhm abroad in 1925. He would return, however, in 1930. Then he set up the SS, whose job it was to be loyal to Hitler and to protect him at all costs. He placed Heinrich Himmler in charge of this group and expanded the membership to 3,000. They became feared by the German people. Despite all these changes, the party was still split between those who wanted to emphasise the socialist part of the party. They worked to convince the people that the Nazis would support workers against business. Others, including Hitler, emphasised the nationalist part of the name, focusing on promoting traditional German values that Hitler had discussed in Mein Kampf and to take violent action against the Jewish people of Germany. Hitler therefore called a national conference of the party in Bamberg in 1926, where he made his own views clear in a five-hour speech. He suggested the socialist Nazis were communists in disguise. 
This cemented the party about where they should stand, i.e. they should be highlighting the nationalist view. This clearly stated the Nazis as a nationalist party and the socialism aspect was dropped. He also took the opportunity to win Goebbels over to his side, which would benefit the party greatly because of his knowledge and understanding of media and advertising. Despite Hitler's organisational, leadership and policy changes, the Nazis did not enjoy success in elections. They gained 6.5% of the vote in May 1924, 3% in December 1924 and just 2.6% in May 1928. The working class had abandoned support for them due to Stresmer's economic and foreign policy improvements. As the economy boomed and people had jobs and money to spare, there was little thought for the nationalists. The government were doing a good job and the people voted to keep it that way. Added to this was Paul von Hindenburg becoming president. He was popular with both moderate voters and nationalist voters and the people saw no reason for things to change. The Nazi party would need a catastrophe to hit Germany to regain support. Okay, that's everything you need to know about the reorganisation of the NSDAP in the 1920s and the lean years. Now for a quick word from my other half and I will see you next time. History teacher's SO here. She's given up work and is living off her savings to make these videos full time. Unfortunately, savings don't last forever. So we're asking for your help. If you can spare any money to help her keep making these videos, please visit the buy me a coffee link in the description and give what you can. That said, we know these are difficult times. You might not have any money to spare, but you can still help. Like, comment and subscribe for the algorithm, but also spread the word. Tell your friends, colleagues and anyone you think might be interested. Thanks.